Happy Friday, July 1st. First half of the year is over. Here we go. Boom, into the next half. And it was, I think a lot of people are waiting in the crypto space, we're waiting for that six month candle to print. You know, when you look at the charts, you've got one minute charts, you've got five minute, 15 minutes, one hour, one day, you know, three month charts, one month, three months, six month, one year charts. You know, so you see, um, you see a pattern develop and when you have these big closes, you know, like a six month close, a candle prints, you know, basically, you know, where did the six month start? Where did it end? Um, and so it kind of creates some drama, I guess you could say. So that closed yesterday. And I think Bitcoin was up uh, from its prior six month uh, candle. So I think the, the uptrend continues, you know, on the macro scale. But Litecoin um, had a little bit of a pump. So did Bitcoin, so did all the cryptos, you know, when that candle closed. You've got, um, I don't know, there's right now in the crypto market, here's, here's how I look at it. Watching the stock markets and Leah Halpern, Halpern, Leah, Leah Halpern, she was on CNBC yesterday and I tweeted it out. You know, I took a capture of the video and tweeted it out and it kind of got shadow banned, I think, because it wasn't showing up in the feed. But she had a good, uh, a good response to the CBDCs. Um... Sorry, I don't know what we got going here. Um, she had a good response for the CBC, CBDC issue on uh, Charles Payne, his show on Fox Business. It was on Fox Business. So the CBDCs are nothing but control mechanisms. It's like the absolute horror. She had a great quote, and I can't remember what it is, but as far as it's, it's the worst thing that could ever happen to you financially. Because you've got a situation where the government can come in and they can say, okay, this is what we're going to use. This is the digital currency. You know, it's crypto based, you know, to fool you and think, you know, oh, great, I'm using crypto. You know, for most of the people in the population, they think, oh, it's cryptocurrency. Oh, okay, that's cool. You know, it's got the security, it's got the encryption and all that. It's on the blockchain, all the buzzwords. The problem is with the CBDC, and as she illustrated or pointed out, was that they can put time locks on it. They can control everything about it. So if you don't, in her instance, she said, if you don't get the prick, uh, well, you know, you can't come into the restaurant. That's what they said, you know, in real, you know, oh, you got to wear a mask, you got to be pricked, you know, or you can't come in this restaurant. Well, they can actually effectively make sure you can't go in that restaurant or buy anything else if you don't follow the mandates because they can shut it off. They can put time limits on it. They can do anything they want with the money at that point. It's not like digital cash. It's a digital control grid. And that's a scary thing. And what I think I'm seeing, and I kind of had this talk with Mitch a little bit the other night. And today I'm smoking a, uh, a CAO Brasilia. It's a pretty good cigar. I mean, it really is. I mean, you can get some pretty good deals on these. Um, but I should get a cigar sponsorship, huh? But it, it's a pretty decent cigar. I really, I like the flavor of it. And it burns well smokes well uh so anyway enough of that but what i the discussion we had was the um, stable coins and a stable coin is something that it's uh tied to the dollar basically it's stable to the dollar it's supposed to be it's um you know so if you've got one usdc one usdt uh in one ust which that didn't work out so well it's supposed to equal one dollar and it's backed by various things it's not always backed by dollars though that's the thing and it's private companies typically there might be some public entities in it but there are companies running these things so it's not a government so you've got companies that can go under you saw what happened with ust it went to zero basically and then they had to create another cryptocurrency to bail it out ponzi it out whatever um so you can think that uh you know, it's like, okay, hey, I got all this Bitcoin. I want to take Bitcoin profit. You know, Bitcoin $60,000. I want to take my one Bitcoin and, and sell it, and I'll put it in a stable coin, UST. And, and so then I've got $60,000 sitting there. And so when Bitcoin goes down to $20,000, i am going to buy back in. Then I can get three Bitcoin for the one that I had. You know, it's supposed to be pegged to the dollar and held to the dollar price. Well, the problem with UST is it went from $1 to like thousandth, a millionth of a penny. It went to zero because what backed it didn't back it anymore and it all unwound and so the same thing with usdc which is one of the popular ones out there that stable coin supposed to be pegged to the dollar they're not holding dollars one for one for each token that's created you know it's invested in other things like treasuries and safety things whatever it is well if things start to unwind and they're leveraged the wrong way that thing's gonna go to zero too 
So what that what I think is going to happen, and my feeling is, all these are going to get blown up. You know, there might be one that's anointed that's going to be, you know, sanctioned by the governments. Uh, it could be USDC, could be something else. Could, you know, it might be a new one. But what will happen is, if they blow these stable coins up, I mean, destroy them and take a few of them to zero, people are going to be in like in panic mode. Like, oh my God, I can't take profits in crypto. I can't get, you know, out of crypto and get back into the dollar. Why would you? So that'll just cause more chaos like it has. It's going to drive the price of crypto really low. They'll be able to scoop it all up. All the sound ones, Bitcoin, Litecoin. You know, I mean, they'll be able to scoop all that stuff up because they got the money, unlimited money. And they'll scoop up as much as they can get their hands on. The people are selling it and panicking out of it. So when that happens and they blow up the stable coins, they can come back and say, hey, this has been a catastrophe. It's a bad experiment. We've got all these different different companies involved in these stable coins. We need to make sure it's fully backed by the U.S. government. And at that point, people will say, yeah, I want to make sure it's one for one with the dollar. You know, this is crazy. Even though dollar is inflationary, it doesn't matter. At least it's pegged to something. And, and so they'll come out with their CBDC at that point. And they'll call it something different, maybe. They'll call it whatever, the U.S. freedom coin. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. But they'll come out with it and people will accept it because they'll say, Phew, at least when I take profits now, or at least when I want to get out of crypto now, I can get back into the dollar and it's stable, you know, a crypto that's stable, and then I can move back and forth and, you know, and that's what they'll do. So I think... I think we're going to see more destruction before it gets any better. But that being said, so you think, well, man, I might be able to get Litecoin for not $50 like today. I might be able to get it for $20. Yeah, you might be able to. Problem is, will you be able to get it on the exchange? And if the camera shakes, I apologize. I got the two dogs out here with me, and so they might get nuts, knock the camera over, tripod. Uh, but what will happen is you might not be able to get it. Now, you may be able to get it. The thing is, right now you look at the stock markets. They're down, what, 20% worst year ever since 1970, worst beginning, first half of the year since 1970 for the stock market, U.S. stock markets. People are invested in this stuff. Now, if you're a normal person who has your pension wrapped up in these stock markets, you're thinking, oh my God, I took a 20% haircut. That's a big deal because you're used to it being stable and it goes up you know every year you get consistent returns you know three percent five percent whatever it is you know at least it's going up you know it's the inflation's going into the stock market and continuing to prop it up well now your pin got pulled and now we've dropped 20 percent like what the heck happened you know in crypto we're used to that but the difference is you can drop 20 percent in the stock market will that ever recover i mean you're looking at big companies you know you're dependent upon them working and making profits and doing well and then you really don't even have ownership of it because it's just a digital certificate i mean honestly it is you get nothing to really back it up it's housed somewhere by somebody and if you want to take it out you got to jump through a bunch of hoops and do you really have it can you get it when you need to cash out and what hoops do you have to jump through cryptocurrency is very easy you own it you have possession of it you put it in your own wallet you don't leave it on an exchange you walk away with it. And so those big haircuts in crypto don't bother me. To me, it's a buying opportunity because I know when there's a fixed supply of something, they can't do a stock split. They can't, they can't go, you know, a, a 10 to 1 kind of deal. You know, they can't control the amount and it can't be manipulated on the blockchain. Now, it can be manipulated in the exchanges and a myriad of different other ways, but it's up to you. If you don't sell and you hold it, you still hold that asset. It's just like holding reserves of oil, you know, barrels of oil, or or a storehouse of food, canned goods. Okay, you might have paid, you know, $5 for a big can of beans, and now it's $3. You know, it's on sale at the store, you know, while supplies last. You go to the store, you can't get it. You know, oh, we ran out. But it was 3 bucks, man, I could have gotten a really good deal. Thing is, you still got your, your can of beans. It's still a can of beans that you can use. Doesn't matter what you paid for it, because that money can just be inflated out of you know out of nowhere at some point. And then you can't get the beans anyway, even if they're on sale or if they're ten dollars a can. Point is, you have it, and you've got the security in knowing that you do have it. And with crypto, that's the same way. That's that's the way it is with me. I know that I hold it. I have it. You know, I paid this for it, that for it, whatever. You know, paid hundred dollars for a Litecoin. Now it's fifty. Buy more get some more and see that's my mentality right now yeah it could go down over this holiday weekend because they kind of like to pull some stuff like that they can knock it down to 40 bucks could knock it down to 35 bucks it'll be quick 
Will you be able to catch it? Will you be able to buy it where you want to buy it at that time? Will you be paying attention? Do you have your alerts set? You know, and you'll look back and say, oh man, it was Sunday night, you know, the night before Independence Day and they whacked it down to 35 bucks. Oh, I missed it. The next day it's back to 50. And phew, somebody, somebody didn't miss the boat. Somebody, you know, capitalized, but very few capitalized because it didn't last very long. It'll go quickly. So, you know, then you look at it and say, then it runs to 60 bucks. Well, I should have bought it at 50. And see, so you beat yourself up. So the thing is, um, a dollar cost averaging strategy is kind of my outlook on it. It's like, hey, man, last year at this time, $50 Litecoin, pff, I, I would have begged for it. And now when it's $50, everybody's like, eh, you know, it could go lower. I don't care if it goes lower. Honestly, I don't. Because I know historically where it's going and where it's been. And it's going to go back to that because there's fewer and fewer that are going to come onto the market because next August, I think, or August-ish, you know, a little over a year from now, you've got a Litecoin reward having. So each block that's produced doesn't produce as many Litecoin in reward. So there's fewer on the market. There's only 70 plus million right now that exist and there's only 84 million that can ever exist. And it's going to take like 100 years to get the last 14 million. So what's available now in the little bit that comes onto the market is a scarce asset. Only so much to go around. You know, do the math. And I've done this many times. You know, if you take 330 million people in the United States and you take 84 million Litecoin, that's only a quarter of a Litecoin per person if you distributed it equally. A quarter of a Litecoin, 0.25. It's like $12.50. You can go out and take, spend $100 instead of wasting it, you know, going out and buying fireworks or something silly. Take a $100 bill and go get two Litecoin. I mean, you're eight times ahead of the average person in the U.S. at that point. But if you take the whole world population, let's say seven, eight billion, you get like 0 0.01 Litecoin, hundredth of a Litecoin. Franny, 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 come here, Franny. Watch the dogs, Franny. So the scarce... The scarcity that's built into Litecoin and Bitcoin, I just like Litecoin better, the fundamentals are better, it has, it's faster, it's cheaper to send, it's got privacy features built in with Mimblewimble, uh, MWeb, I mean, it's just, it's a better, it's a better form of money, digital money, it just really is. Does the price in dollars reflect that? Not really, but I look at it as, man, that's really on sale, that's something that someone like me who's not a big fish, I can afford to get. I can spend a hundred dollar bill, go to an ATM, pull out two Litecoin, you know, maybe not so much, but $110 or something, but it just makes sense to me. It works. And when things are undervalued, that's what I want to get. I don't want to get it when it, you know, it's, it's $500 a Litecoin and chasing it. No, I'd rather get 10 of them right now for that kind of money. Let's see dogs down here shaking the tripod. Hey, don't chew on my tripod. The big one likes to chew on stuff. So it's a very undervalued asset right now. And so I would much rather hold my wealth in something that I can control. I'm not dependent upon the stock market. I'm not worried about, you know, oh, what's the government going to do this, sanction this, that. You know what? Litecoin runs on its own network. Look at her. Boom. The little one. Litecoin runs on its own network. It's outside of the government. It's outside of, you know, a central bank. All that can shut down, it still runs. As long as you got a computer running the code, the Litecoin code, it's done and that's really all it is i mean it's just it's code that people voluntarily no it's code that voluntarily is run by people on a network tilly stop no might have to pick her up and make a cameo appearance it's huge be good so it's just like all of us getting together and saying hey we want a new form of money we're going to create something else so we write up a document that says we write up a document that says defines that form of money. That's all cryptocurrency is. It's just like a constitution. It says these are the rules and we're all going to play by them. And we're going to have this form of money that we all agree on. That's all crypto is. And so we put energy into it. We build, you know, mining, you know, we have a computer, we run a node, we run the code and that's, and that's it. And we just opt out and we start using it. And so as more and more people start using it, it has more value. That's really all it is. So, you know, don't think of it as something mysterious and magical. It's just really words on paper that we've manifested into reality. We've given power to, like we give anything power. We give power to the dollar bill. Why? Why do we give power to that magic trick? 
I don't know, it's because how we were raised, you know, a dollar bill, you know, what's really not even a dollar bill, it's a Federal Reserve note, look at the top of it, you know, it's, it's a central bank, a private bank that's outside of government, and the whole illusion starts breaking down, and then you start realizing, wait a minute, I'm, I'm just in a rigged casino, that's all, I'm, I'm in a rigged casino, it's a vampire casino that takes all your energy, so once you realize that, and you realize it's all a fraud, it's all a magic trick, it's all a show, you say, all right, I'm backing out of it. I'm going to go over here. I mean, this is an outside, this is outside of it. This is, you know, I'm going to run this code. I'm going to volunteer my energy to this code. I'm going to take the $100 bill uh, with Benjamin Franklin's face on it, and I'm going to go and exchange it for some sound money for the digital age. I'm going to get some Litecoin. It's a done deal. I don't care what the price is, because I know that those dollars are going to get destroyed. I see the Biden administration is going to announce, hey, we need another $800 million in weapons for Ukraine. Boris Johnson from uh, the UK, the prime minister, just said, hey, we're going to send another billion pounds, you know, uh, to the Ukraine. I mean, it's like, what is this money pit that we're involved in here? I mean, it's just, every week there's more money thrown at it. And yet, you know, we have these issues here in the United States, you know, people dying in trucks, you know, I mean, and it's just like, what, what is this madness? People getting shot up here and there. And, you know, we can't even get baby formula. Yet we throw money away on, on all this other stuff that doesn't even involve us. And then I hear Biden come out and saying it's Russia, Russia, Russia. It's almost like a movie. I mean, you know, it's like this, you know, the Brady Bunch theme, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And you got him saying Russia, Russia, Russia. And it's, it's like a comedy show, but it's a horror, you know, there's like a fine line between comedy and horror. And we're like, you know, getting real close to it, to where this is madness. Everything's Russia's fault. You know, he's blaming the, the oil and the cost of gasoline on Russia, and it's going to continue as long as Putin, you know, is the bad guy. I mean, here we go, 1984, you know, we need a big brother type or something, you know, some enemy. And it's, I mean, the absurdity to say that it's all Russia's fault. I mean, the gas prices were going up since the day he came into office because he's shutting down things and you're making it more hard to, to drill for oil and natural resources. You're shutting down and making the permits difficult to get. So what do we have, like 11 refineries that refine the oil and the gasoline have shut down since he's become president, something like that. So of course you're gonna have a pinch in the supply. It has nothing to do with Putin. I mean, yeah, that's just the cherry on top at this point. That's absolutely absurd. And what you've seen since the sanctions have been put on Russia is that their ruble has gotten stronger because they're basing it on those natural resources because they have natural resources. They've got oil, they've got natural gas, they've got gold, they've got all the things that you need to have a strong country. You got energy, you got money. Okay, we're good. And you think you're gonna hurt them. I mean, it's just, you might hurt them with the dollar so they can't participate in that dollar system, that rigged casino, but more and more people aren't gonna participate anyway. For them, it's a blessing. They can say, hey, you know what? You wanna buy our oil? Pay in gold, pay in Bitcoin, pay in whatever you know, we want. Because you need the oil and you need the natural gas. If you want gold, probably won't even give it to you. But if you want gold, eh, you know, we might take Bitcoin for it. But I mean, you, when you've got that kind of wealth in the ground, what are you gonna do to that person? And so they are their own bank at this point. That's what we need to do, become our own bank because the dollar is dying, because the dollar is a, a tyrannical weapon. It's a weapon of mass destruction, it really is. And so you see El Salvador going towards Bitcoin, you know, and there's growing pains with that. You see other countries talking about going towards Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. That's just a repudiation of the dollar-based system. The dollar vampire system that is just sucking the energy out of everybody because you know when you print money at will and you're forced to you know anyway long history lesson there but it's unwinding and it's unwinding at the fringes and then pretty soon it's going to get closer and closer to home to where we're in bad shape so it's important now to make the moves to become your own bank and have the assets that you need have the resources that you need to survive you're going to need some sound money, you're probably going to need some silver, probably going to need some light coin, going to need some food on the shelf, you know, you're going to need some water, access to water. I mean, even better. I mean, you're going to need those things because they're systematically destroying everything. Every, every day almost, you're seeing something new, how they're destroying this, they're destroying that. Oh, we're taking this away, taking that away. 
and it's just this factory burned down putting this sanction on this country so we can't get that anymore so it's it's just really unbelievable what's happening so we'll see how long it can last i don't know but it's an engineered destruction that you know we can get in front of we still have a little bit of time it's very important to do that i think so make the moves that um give you that security that give you that you know nobody's gonna everybody's gonna feel pain it's just maybe feel less pain put you in a better position to where you can you can survive this better I mean, there's some people that, you know, you're completely dependent upon the stock market. That's where all your wealth is. That's scary. Frightening. So just know that hard times are here and they're financial. And if you're putting your eggs in the financial basket that's, that's failing us, that's not a good thing. Get assets that you need. Get assets that you're going to use. Don't buy things you don't need. You know, like I said, don't go out and spend, you know, a bunch of money, you know, on, on fireworks or, you know, a bunch of booze and, you know, whatever it is this weekend. You know, cut it back in half and take the other half that you would have spent and put it into something like Litecoin or a crypto or, or silver or, you know, a can of beans. You know, something that you're going to use, you're going to need. So just, just my opinion, um, that's what I do. I actually am thinking right now of running to an ATM. You know, I'm kind of looking at the price and I've, I've got a little bit of money on the sidelines ready to go to, to maybe pick up a few Litecoin. Um, it goes, you know, starts dropping under 50 bucks. I'm, I can't help myself. I gotta pull the trigger. I mean, it's just a no brainer to me. You know, I look at it from the standpoint of r ratios I think I talked about this in another video, but you know, if you've got two ounces of silver, just like two gold eagles or silver eagles, I think it'd be nice, two gold eagles, but two silver eagles. Right now, the uh, the cost of that, you're probably gonna pay 25, six, seven dollars, even though the spot price is like 20, 21, because there's a premium. So if you've got two of those, you can take those two silver eagles and get one whole light coin. I mean, I start thinking about it and I'm like, man, there's only so much Litecoin to go around. We're going digital. We're living in a digital world. It's been running for almost 11 years now, the network without interruption. You can always send value. It's very efficient. And I think, I mean, silver has its place, but you know, if I can take two silver coins and get one whole Litecoin for it, I think that's a pretty good deal. I really do because I can see at some point where it's 10 to one, where if you that one Litecoin can get you 10 silver back, it's just, I look at things in proportion to, you know, what their value is and what the ratios are. And I just think that's a, I think I'd be doing that all day long, you know, two ounces of silver and then one ounce of silver, if it ever got to that point, that'd be even better. But I mean, silver has its place. It will always have its place in medicine and technology. But as far as portability, as far as spending it, you know, you gotta have a one-on-one -on -one transaction. You gotta be like face to face. And the beauty of Litecoin is that you can send it anywhere in the world any time of the day and nothing can stop that from happening and nothing's ever stopped that from happening. So the ability to transfer wealth, you don't have to test it, make sure the silver's good, you know, have whatever testing kit, you know, you don't need all those tools. All you need is, oh, you got a phone, boom, you, somebody sends it to you. It's verified by the blockchain. You know, you have to think about it because that code's running. We all agree on. Boom, it's in my wallet. I know I have it. Blockchain confirms it, does all the work. You don't have to test it. You don't have to worry about it. It's Litecoin. So I'm just looking at the value propositions. I'm looking at the use case. Um, and, and so, you know, when I see a two to one ratio, if I can get an, uh, one Litecoin for two ounces of silver, I think that's a pretty darn good deal. I really do. Because I can see a time when Litecoin will buy 20 ounces, you know, a whole tube of silver eagles, one Litecoin. I mean, and then maybe like, eh, maybe I'll go back into silver <laughs> um, a little bit, but the value of what it offers at this, at these ratios, at this price, it's, it's a phenomenal buy in my mind. It really is. It's a tremendous opportunity and it doesn't have to cost you a lot. So if you got a hundred dollar bill, it's like, man, if you can pick up two Litecoin, you're way ahead of the game. I mean, just way ahead of the game. Make sure you download your own wallet. Um, you know, Coinomi I like. I like um, Exodus, 
you know, those are two good ones. You write down your seed phrase, your words. At that point, you 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 are the bank. You own it. You can destroy that phone. You know, put your Litecoin on there, destroy the phone. As long as you have that seed phrase, you can restore that anywhere in the world. You can memorize it, leave the country, restore it somewhere else on another cheap device, and then send it and buy something with it. Trade it for something. I mean, it's a no-brainer. You can't take gold out of the country. You can't take silver out of the country. They're going to say, what are you doing? Oh, what's going on? Crypto's different like that. It's imaginary. You can have it all up here if you want. So, you know, there's something very liberating about that. So you can be your own bank. Um, Friday, it's happy hour. Happy hour Friday, 4 o'clock. We're going to have a special guest. You can go watch us on Litecoin Lisa's channel. Do a search on Litecoin Lisa if you haven't watched it. You should be watching it if you haven't been watching it. Go to Litecoin Lisa's channel on YouTube, and you will be able to watch us at 4 p.m. Central Time. I'll probably be in the bar because it's going to rain. I like being outside, but eh. Probably be in the bar. We got a special guest coming on, uh, some special announcements, some big things coming up. Check out LitecoinLisa.net because on August 6th, uh, there's going to be a big event in Oklahoma City, big charity event. I mean, it's going to be a good time. Johnny Litecoin's coming. There's several other people coming. And, you know, come hang out in Oklahoma City and check out that event for charity. Uh, litecoinlisa.net she's got all the details we'll be talking about on happy hour today and uh i don't know if i'll have any drinks to, or not right now i haven't uh since my westwood meetup uh two weekends ago i figured it would go out and talk too much my westwood meetup two weekends ago um that tuesday afterwards my buddy you know from grade school um I had to go to his funeral and put him in the ground Happens to all of us. I mean, so that, that was rough. But that Tuesday, I was, you know, I went out and had some drinks with my old buddies and I haven't drank since. I'm just kind of like, uh, so I don't know if I'm gonna be drinking today for happy hour. I know, right? Didn't last weekend either, or last Friday. Just uh, kind of kind of stepping back for a little bit. Just uh, once in a while, you know, a man's got to know his limitations, right? A little detox doesn't hurt. Still smoking the cigars, but uh, you know, I kind of cut it out on the on the booze for now, and I think that's good to kind of purge your system every once in a while, you know, uh, give it a break. And so I've kind of been giving it a break, and we'll see. I, you know, I may or may, may not have a drink this afternoon, but uh, it's still going to be a happy hour. It's going to be in the bar, and uh, so I hope you check that out. We've got some good stuff coming, good information coming, and um, it's a great space. The great the crypto community, this this whole crypto thing the freedom mindset that we all have that is, is drawn like-minded people into it. It's an important thing. It's a great thing. You know, it's really magical because I can't think what I'd be doing right now if I were not involved in cryptocurrency. You know, like many of us, I think, you know, it'd be a life of quiet desperation. It would be, okay, what's the answer? How do we get out? I guess I'm buying silver and gold, you know, and just wait for everything to fall apart and collapse. And, you know, crypto's offered a solution, a different form of money to where we don't have to rely on those old systems that can be manipulated. We can hold it in our own possession. And there's only so much to go around, and that's really the key. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, specifically Litecoin to me, Digibyte, Dogecoin, eh, not so much, but I mean, it's still a cryptocurrency. Um, but the, the ones that have fixed supplies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Digibyte, you've got the ability to have something that there's only so much of. There's a big pie there and you're taking slices of it. And there's only so much left. When that pie is gone, somebody's gonna have to ask you, hey, will you sell it to me? You know, it depends, what do I get? And I like being in that position to where I know how much there is. I don't know how much gold there is. I don't know how much silver there is. I don't know how much oil there is. I, you know, I don't know how much of these things, you know, more can be found, you know, the gold, Heck, you could open up the Grand Canyon, like Bix Weir says, and there's tons of gold in there. Hundreds, thousands of tons of gold. Well, what's that make the gold that you're holding worth? A lot less. Same with silver. I mean, I, I think there's a lot less silver, but what if what if you find a big silver hoard, you know, a big mother load, like happened in Nevada? I mean, what happens at that point to what you're holding? I mean, it becomes worth less because there's more on the market. That's the problem with the dollar. What you hold in dollars is worth less every day because they create more dollars. So it just doesn't have the scarcity. And so with crypto, with Litecoin, I know there's only gonna be 84 million. 
and I'm not even gonna see that much in my lifetime. I know right now there's a little over 70 million. So I can do the math and realize, okay, I know how big that pie is. I get this much of a slice, I'm in good shape. And, and it's, I wanna know the facts. Give me the facts and I can play the game. The problem is we've been living in a rigged game and nobody's told us what the rules are. Well, nobody gives us the facts. They lie to us. So all they do is lie to us. And once you realize that, you stop believing them. You stop listening to them. It's like, I'm done. You're a bunch of liars. You're a bunch of cheaters. All you're doing, you're vampires. That's all you are, you're vampires. And you just want to steal our energy. I'm not going to let you do it anymore. You've got an opportunity to not let you do that. And I'm not going to let you do it. So once you have that mentality, once you see through that veil and realize what they are, see them for who they are, what they are, it's game over. It's just a matter of more and more of us waking up, exiting the casino. Pretty soon, there's nobody playing at the table. You're done. You got no energy. You're a vampire. You need our energy. If we don't volunteer it, they're dead. They go away. Shine the light of truth on them, they wither away. They die. It's that simple. Changes overnight. All right. Hope you have a wonderful day, wonderful Friday, wonderful Independence Day coming up in a few days. Remember what that means. Stay independent. Remember those people. They all been, you know, the founding fathers would have been red flagged, you know, this legislation, red flag gun laws, they would have been red flagged back in their day if the legislation existed. So government's not your friend. Government's a vampire. Just remember that on Independence Day. All right. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Love you all. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you on happy hour this afternoon, 4 p.m. Central Time, Light Queen Lisa's YouTube channel. Trust yourselves. Always trust yourselves. You know the truth. You know the truth deep down. Trust yourself. All right. Love you all. Thanks for watching.